Hey, welcome back to the channel. Today, I want to show you a better way to sidechain with an Ableton over just a stock compressor or glue compressor. So without further ado, let's get right into it. I'm now realizing that I've worn this sweatshirt, I think for this will be the third video in a row. I recorded them on different days. This is just the only sweatshirt I have right now that fits me well. Spare chain. Shout out Wage War. So getting right into it, usually what I do is I will pop on a audio effect and then let's just say, for example, if we load in a new audio track, I will pop on a compressor and then for the compressor, I already have it set up with the side chain. Nice. And I have my ratio at 3.5, my attack at one millisecond, the release at 30. Usually what I'll do is I'll drag this all the way down and then I either put this on auto or I kind of adjust it based on what the song tempo is. <laughs> And then we get a pretty good effect. So if I go ahead and just load up, let's say let's pop into splice and get like an atmosphere or a long sample here so we can hear what the uh, compressor does. Something like that's cool. Pump up the volume. And then what we can actually do is I'm going to put this on the audio track. I'm going to have this side chain with just the kick here. Duh. And then we can hear what it does without it. And then with it. You can hear it's ducking. If we pull this down, you can hear it more. And then if we go ahead and freeze this track, or let, I guess we can just resample it from the group so we can see exactly what it's doing. So you can see that it's ducking with the kick because that sidechain compressor is pulling the volume of the sample all the way down when what you're sidechaining it to actually hit. So I think most people know what sidechain compressing is, but if you don't, that's a quick explanation of it. Now with the Ableton compressor, you can see how low the volume gets right here. It's basically zero, but sometimes the compressor feels a little bit slow or it doesn't feel like it's pulling the volume all the way way down to where it might be muddying up your kicks and your snares. Now that is where this plugin by Slink comes in and it's actually called Duck Buddy. So this is a Max for Live plugin. So if you don't have Ableton Suite, unfortunately, this is not going to work unless you have Max for Live. But basically what this is, is it's a plugin that allows you to kind of have your own LFO shaper or your own sidechain shaper within Ableton. And all you have to do is just make a MIDI track for it to sidechain to. So Unfortunately, this won't work with audio. So if you have a sidechain audio track, this won't work. But what I did was I just went up here and I dialed in a serum track just with hits on each kick. And then you can actually route this in order to map your sidechain to your sidechain sample. So for example, if we go ahead and turn off the duck buddy and we do the sidechain just with this main chord stack we have here, it sounds like this. So you can hear that ducking is taking place. However, if we turn that one off and we turn the duck buddy on and we'll just cycle between them a little bit so you can hear the differences, we get a much cleaner sample from the duck buddy. Now, of course, we can pull this down more. But unfortunately, we're still getting a lot of sound when it's supposed to be hitting. So the compressor, unfortunately, to really get a dialed in sound, I don't think can do exactly what the Duck Buddy can do. So we're just going to take that off. I'm going to drag this Duck Buddy before saturator, just if there's any clipping, turn this back on, and we'll kind of go through what you can do with this. So for Duck Buddy, we have it up here, what we're linking it to for the side chain. So we're linking it to the serum up here. And then you have your wavetable shaper down here, which we'll get into a second the depth, so how much this is actually pulling the volume or side chaining it to down. We have the length of how fast this is going to affect it. We have some gate velocity, and then we have the ramp and the smooth. How it comes in, I feel, is a good starting point so you can mess with it. You also have milliseconds to mess with if you want to really dial in the right amount of sidechain length. And I think that is probably as far as you need to go to get a good sidechain dial then, unless you want to do something pretty advanced. So one thing that I thought was cool was this is just like Ableton shaper tool where you can actually drag new shapes into here if you want something pretty crazy. And one thing I like about this plugin as well is you have this little plus sign so you can see exactly what's going on. So if we go ahead and play our sample. You can see what's happening to the sample in real time. So it's all the way muted down here and then it comes up in volume. So I think it's really useful if you're a visual learner as well to where you can actually draw a shape in here and get a cool effect. So Duck Buddy, I think is probably several months later. So Duck Buddy is probably the ultimate free solution in getting really good sidechain with an Ableton. Of course, you can keep rocking with the compressor or the glue compressor, whatever you like or whatever's convenient, but this is a free plugin and I think it's worth adding if you have Max for Life. So if we listen to everything all together with the Duck Buddy on, we can see just how clean this all sounds. Now really pay attention to the drums and the sidechain.
Kick sounds really clean. Of course, we're not side chaining it to the snare, but if we did, we would get a good, a good deck for that snare as well. But again, a really useful product. And if you haven't checked it out and you have the capability to do so, I recommend it fully. So that's all I have for you today. I hope you learned something from today's video. But with all this being said, thank you for watching and we will see you again on the next one.